Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me today as we go through this Gulfstream Envision 21 TBD. So let's go how to get this thing hooked up to your tow vehicle. It is gonna ride on a two and five sixteenths ball. Um, so once you get your tow vehicle backed underneath it, you're gonna use your electric tongue jack to raise and lower that. Uh, and once you get back under it and lower it onto it, you're just gonna slide your coupler there forward and it's gonna drop in and latch. Make sure these two ears are all the way down inside that cavity and that's gonna be in the latch position. To get it to release off the ball, it's just gonna be the opposite pickup and pull back towards the jack and it should release. A Couple other things that need to be hooked up to the tow vehicle are gonna be our safety chains. Now these do need to cross and create a basket under the tongue and then they're gonna clip onto the receiver hitch. Another thing that needs to be hooked up to the receiver hitch on its own path, not routed through the chains and on its own clip, is gonna be your safety breakaway cable here that hooks up to the safety breakaway box right under here. And this thing is designed to yank out of this box if you do accidentally get separated completely from the tow vehicle. This is gonna pull out and engage the brakes on the trailer to bring it to a stop. So don't route it through the chains and put it on its own clip. Last thing that's gonna hook into our tow vehicle is gonna be our seven-way plug here. This is gonna run all of our running lights, turn signals, brake lights, and the electric brakes on the trailer if your vehicle is equipped with a brake control. Now, as I mentioned, this does have an electric tongue jack, so we do have a couple switches here on the top. Uh, We're gonna have one that just says on off, which is gonna be for our service light here on the front of the jack. The other one says up and down, which is for raising and lowering the tongue of the trailer. Now, if for some reason this does fail, the motor fails or the electric uh, power goes out on it, you can pop out this rubber plug right here and inside you will see a manual crank spot. And you will use this crank handle right here. Just fits it down in there right on top. And then you can manually crank this up and down as needed. Just behind that's gonna be our two 20 pound propane cylinders. Now this cover can be removed completely, but for basic normal operation, you're just gonna loosen up these two little thumb nuts on top, tip them back towards the trailer, which will allow you to open the lid on top. And inside you will find access to your two uh, cylinder service valves, as well as your changeover regulator. Uh, for a better picture, we're gonna go ahead and go over how to remove this and show you how to remove the cylinders. Uh, to take them and get them refilled or exchanged. So with the lid open, you're gonna have to undo this Velcro strap in here. We're just gonna take this loose and it's gonna uh, just pull right out of this groove that's at the top of the tank or the top of the cover. And then we can lift the cover straight up and off. All right, now that we're in here uh, to remove your cylinders, first things first, make sure your service valve is closed. Go ahead and remove your service hose from the cylinder. And we can loosen up the wing nut here. Now you should just have to take this loose enough that you can lift the T-bar out of the way or your crossbar here. Just lift it up and you can kind of tip your cylinder out and then lift it from the trailer. Now you can take this in your vehicle and get it exchanged or refilled, whatever is available to you or whatever you choose to do. And just remember anytime you're transporting a cylinder like this that it is in the upright position for your safety. Now putting it back on the trailer is gonna be just the opposite. Again, we're gonna lift our crossbar out of the way. Set the cylinder back in there. I like to go ahead and hook up my service hose first. Make sure I have the right angle on the cylinder. Then I'm gonna go ahead and snug up the wing nut. And now you can either turn that cylinder back on or continue using the one that you have over here. Now, like I said, this does have an auto changeover regulator on it. So what that means is, is if you run both cylinders open, it's gonna automatically choose, uh, it's auto, gonna automatically drain the primary cylinder, which is determined by this lever first. Once that one is empty, it's gonna automatically switch over and pull from the other cylinder. Uh, so we here at Princess Craft recommend that you run these in what we would call a manual mode by keeping one cylinder on, one cylinder off, and using the selector switch to determine your cylinder. So we would keep this one on, that one off. We have the uh, selector switch pointing towards this cylinder. Once it goes empty, we're gonna come out here, we're gonna turn this one off, turn this one on, and we're gonna turn the selector switch to designate that tank now. 
Uh, that way we know that we have an empty cylinder and we can go get it refilled or exchanged while we're using the other cylinder and we don't get caught on two empty cylinders. When you're done there, just put your cover back on. It's just gonna slide right back down over it. Again, take your uh, Velcro strap. It's gonna fish through this slot right here at the top. Just pull it through, strap it back to itself and close your lid. Just don't forget whenever you close this lid that you do snug these uh, thumb nuts down here. If you don't, this lid will fly off as you travel down the road. So inside your battery box will be an Interstate Group 24 RV Marine lead deep cycle battery that has to be uh, checked periodically for water level. So you wanna pop your caps off, use distilled water to top it off as necessary. Uh, there are only two cables to hook up on here, your red one and your white one. Red is gonna be positive, white will be your negative. So let's move on around to the off door side of the trailer here. So the front of this trailer is equipped with a large pass through storage. Um, and it also has your crank handle for your stab jacks in here. So this is equipped with four corner stabilizers. Once you get your trailer level side to side with the axles and front to back with the tongue jack, you're gonna run your stabilizers down to the ground and you're just gonna snug them up using the supplied crank handle. Um, again, these do not lift or level the trailer at all. They are just for stabilization. Now in this pass through storage, we do have a light in here that has just a push button on the face of it to turn it on and off. And it is equipped with slam latches on the door here. Uh, one's gonna be no key and the other one is gonna be lockable and they are just held open with a magnet to keep them in the up position. Now on the uh, slide on this, it is equipped with a Schwintec slide system. Here on the side, you'll see your two slide tracks. There's two on the back of the slide as well. These do need to be lubricated with a Teflon based slide lubricant periodically. Um, just make sure they're good and clean, no heavy debris on them. Spray the lube on them, run the slide in and out a couple times to transfer to the gears in the wall. You'll be good to go. The other maintenance that you're gonna to wanna to do is gonna be your big wipe seal that goes all the way around the slide. You're gonna to wanna to use a rubber seal conditioner to make sure those stay pliable as they will break down in the sun and they can continue to do their job if you maintain them, which is to keep water out. So back here behind the slide, we're gonna have all your main connections. This top one is just a uh, pull out cord port. Uh, the cord stores inside, you just fish it back inside like this. It's gonna coil, uh, coil up as it goes in. Uh, it's a 30 amp cord, just pulls out, plugs into your 30 amp power pole at your campsite. Other connections down here, we're gonna have two connections here for uh, cable or satellite, they are labeled here. And then we've got your city water connection. Just gonna open this up, you're gonna hook it up, hook up to it with a drinking safe water hose and a water pressure regulator to provide water pressure to the trailer. We have an exterior spray port, which is a quick connect port. You're just gonna push that collar back, hook your quick connect spray hose in, and then have water. That's gonna bring us to our tank flush port, which is gonna be this one. You're gonna to wanna to have a designated hose for this. Do not use your fresh water hose to flush your black tank. Uh, get a designated hose, hook up to here, hook up to your water, uh, your hose bib. Make sure your black dump valve is open down here and turn that water on and let it run for about five to 10 minutes. Give that tank a good flush which is gonna bring us to our dump station right down here. We are gonna have uh, two valves here, one on the left, one on the right. One on the left uh, is labeled as wastewater, which is gonna be this one over here, which is gonna be our gray water, which is sink and shower. And the one on the right says sewage, which is gonna be this one here, which is gonna be our black tank or our toilet water. So to use everything, you're gonna take your cap off here, just twist, you're gonna twist your uh, sewer hose on there with the bayonet fitting, run it over to the sewer dump. Now with your gray water or your waste water, you can keep that open the whole time you're camping. It is just water. It's okay if it just runs out. Now your black tank does have to stay closed until it is full or until you are ready to break camp. We don't want any set, uh, solid settling in the tank, creating a pyramid plug down the road that may cause problems for you. So leave that one closed until you're ready to leave or until the tank is full. Uh, right back here to the rear of our dump station are gonna be your two low point drains. Uh, blue and red lines there. You're just gonna take these two plastic plugs out and that'll allow the low points to drain, which is a good idea to do if you're gonna be putting the trailer away for a while or storing it up for the winter. So moving around to the back of the trailer here. Um, this is equipped already for a rear observation camera that hooks up up there. 
Real easy to hook up and get everything going. Rear observ observation cameras are great going down the highway so you can see kind of what's going on behind you, as well as when you're backing into your uh, camp spot at the campground. Now this is equipped with a four inch square tube bumper that does have removable plugs on the end. They just pull out. It's a great option for storing your sewer hose. I just uh, give a little bit of caution that it is a metal square tube bumper and you can find sharp edges inside of them that could possibly damage your sewer hose. So just be cautious when you're doing it. Spare tire is mounted back here on the bumper as well. If you do get a flat and need to use this, you're just gonna remove these two lug nuts here and then you can replace your flat tire. Now, if you need to jack the trailer up, you wanna go on to the trailer frame, not onto the axles to lift whichever uh, tire off the ground that you need to change. So coming over here onto the door side, this trailer is equipped with an electric awning. The switch is on the inside. I'll show you how to do that. If you want to adjust the pitch on it, it is adjustable with these little pinch buttons right here. There are some instructions on the inside of the arm. So you can tilt this a little bit. If you're in a light rain, it'll allow the water to easily drain off. Um, but any uh, higher winds or heavier rains you do definitely want to stow your awning back to the trailer so you don't end up with a damaged canvas or hardware. Six gallon water heater on this trailer. It's gonna be a gas electric option so you can run on LP gas or 110 electric or both for faster recovery. Um, so a couple things in here that you'll wanna know dead center here at the bottom is gonna be your anode rod slash drain plug. You do wanna replace that drain plug or the anode rod um, as it wears out. When you drain it out, it's a good time to inspect it as well as rinse the inside of your water heater out. Make sure you get all the debris. Um, as that thing wears, you'll start seeing the skinny rod in the middle of it uh, show more. And probably about 50% of that skinny rod exposed is a good time to go ahead and replace your anode. Now over here in the bottom left corner, you'll see an on off switch. That's gonna be for the 110 heating element right there on the side. Uh, a couple other things to point out in here. This is gonna be your burn chamber. It's the heat's gonna exhaust up here. It's a good idea to uh, inspect that and make sure there are no insect nests in there or anything like that uh, that could affect the gas side operation of your water heater. Now they do make insect screens that you can put over these vents here to help keep bugs out. Okay, that's gonna bring us to our Dometic refrigerator vent here. So to open this thing up, we're just gonna pop this off and a couple things I like to point out, our 110 electric cord over here on the left. This is gonna be our control board. If you're working remotely with somebody over the phone, you may need to gain access to that. All of your burn chamber and everything for the LP gas side is gonna be back behind this cover. And you do have a gas valve back here with a manual shutoff valve on it as well. Now this tube right here is gonna be a condensation drip tube. It is normal to occasionally see uh, water drip out of that. Now to put this cover uh, back on it, you're just gonna line up these four tabs on the bottom. The top of this is gonna snap into place. And once you get this all the way on, you do wanna make sure you turn and latch these. You can see the groove should run uh, the length of the trailer to make sure they are locked in. If you do not do that, good chances are that will blow off whenever you get going down the highway. Now underneath the water heater back here, we do have an exterior propane quick connect hookup that does have a uh, gas valve lever on it right here. So you're gonna push that collar back. You're gonna hook up your quick connect hose there. And once you get hooked up, you can go ahead and turn that on. That's also gonna lock that collar so you can't accidentally disconnect the hose. So you do have to uh, turn that off to, to allow you to disconnect. Now, while we're down here, let's go ahead and talk about our wheels and tires. So it is a good idea to own a torque wrench when you own a trailer and check your torque, uh, your lug nut torque uh, before you hit the road each time. Uh, Gulfstream also has a warning there about checking them. Um, the other thing you're gonna wanna keep up with is your tire pressure. Uh, so we recommend that you inflate your tires to the recommended tire pressure. Per what Gulfstream says, there is a sticker on the off-door side that gives all that information. That's gonna bring us to our fresh water tank fill. Now Gulfstream has put a warning sticker on here about sanitizing the tank, making sure you use potable water only. You don't wanna put something that's unsafe in here. So you're just gonna put your water hose in there and turn the hose bib on. Now you can fill this up all the way. Uh, just put it in, turn it on, and wait till the water gushes back out to you. That's gonna be full. If you want to limit how much you carry, you can watch the monitor panel on the inside of the trailer. 
Furnace exhaust over here on the side, uh, Dometic furnace. This is gonna produce a lot of heat whenever the furnace is running in the winter time, so don't cover it, block it, put anything in front of it. Watch out for fingers that they don't get burned. Now down here in between your axles, you will see your freshwater tank drain. You're just gonna take that cap out of there and that's gonna allow your freshwater tank to drain, which is gonna bring us to our exterior TV mount location. You can remove the TV mount and bring it out here. Um, and this is gonna be your cable antenna hookup to hook up to the TV. And then they also provide you with your 110 outlet to plug your TV into. Now, just above the uh, Envision sticker here on the side, we are gonna find your vent hood vent. To open this up, you're just gonna put your fingers into the two slots and pop that out, and that's just gonna open up. Just don't forget to close it whenever you get ready to hit the road, just push them shut. These are gonna be your two exterior speakers with some fun backlighting in them. The switch is on the inside for that. Now for your steps here, uh, two steps, very easy to use. You're just gonna fold your bottom step on top of the top step. Then you're just gonna pick up right here in the middle and push in, and those are gonna stow. Now to deploy them for use, you're just gonna again, put your hand right in the middle, pick up and pull out, and then flip your bottom step down, and that's how you use your steps. This is gonna be the other side of our big pass-through storage. Again, slam latches on here. And last thing over here is gonna be our exterior solar plug. So if you want to keep your batteries charged up while you're boondocking or in storage, you can get a portable solar panel, plug it in right there, and keep your battery kind of topped up while you're camping. All right, guys, that should cover the exterior of our 21 TBD. Let's go check out the inside. So just coming in the door of our 21 TBD, down here to the left, we're gonna find our fire extinguisher. Little green button on top that you need to push down and make sure it pops back up. Should tell us that we still have plenty of pressure in our fire extinguisher and it should operate if we need it. Switch down there below that is gonna be our entry step light switch. It's gonna turn our uh, light on for our entry steps down there. Um, up to our left, we're gonna have a few other switches. Uh, let me go ahead and cover our awning switch right here. You can see it says in and out on it. So if you uh, push it, it's gonna run our uh, awning in. If you push it to the out, it's going to run our awning out. Now the first switch coming in the door here is going to be our LED uh, light strip running along the edge of the awning. The next one to that is going to be our accent lighting for the exterior speakers. Now the last switch up here is going to run all of our main cabin lights right here. So we've got uh, five of them right here in the main cabin area that that switch will operate. Now, while we're talking about ceiling lights, the rest of them can be turned on and off with a push button right there in the middle. And that's pretty much every other light in the trailer is gonna operate that way. So moving over into our bed area, this thing can be set up a couple of different ways. As it sits right now, it's in its twin bed position. So while we're here, let me show you a couple other things that we have here. We do have some storage drawers down here that pull out on each side. Underneath our mattresses, we do have a uh, flip up storage at the end of each one on both sides. We do have a 110 outlets and USB charge ports on each side of the bed. And we do have our lights under here as well. And a little shelf for you. Now to make this into the full king size bed, you're gonna take this uh, filler plate right here and it's just gonna slide right down and drop in there. And then we're gonna take our two filler cushions and we're gonna fill this in. So let me get those real quick. It's gonna be these two cushions right here. And they will slide in. Just like so and give you a nice, really big king size type bed area. Uh, overhead, you do have three storage compartments. And let me show you how all of your windows and shades will work in here. So these are all slider windows. You're just gonna pull out on the latch in the middle, which will then allow you to slide them open. To close them, just slide them all the way forward. Make sure that you actually get it latched. Now your shades are just pull down style um, for your darkening and privacy. Opposite side is gonna be our fire exit window. Uh, you just pull this uh, red tab right here, that's gonna pop that whole screen off. Pop that lever up and then you can push this window all the way out and climb out if you had to. 
Now you can prop that right there for ventilation. Uh, down here at the foot of the bed, right next to the slide, is gonna be our LP CO alarm down here. It's gonna make some noise uh, if you do, if it does detect any kind of gas leaks or anything like that. Um, so it's a good idea to test it periodically, make sure everything is still working on it as well. So let's go over things, other things up here on the ceiling. We've got our uh, Dometic air conditioner. We've got a couple of different flaps here that we can allow air to come out on the sides. And we can do the ends as well, or we can do straight down and close this off here. Now your controls are right here on the face of it. So this uh, knob here is gonna be temperature control uh, for warm or colder. Now it doesn't actually have heat, but uh, you can turn it to where it just blows the fan basically. The gray side of this is gonna be just fan uh, control if you want that. The blue side will be for compressor operation to make it cold. Now this is also equipped with a return air filter that is right here under this side. So you do wanna pop this out periodically and clean the filter that is attached to it. So you can pop this completely off, wash it with warm soapy water and then let it completely dry before reinstalling. And it just pops back up in here. It's got a few tabs around it that just pop in. Right over the entry door is gonna be your smoke alarm. Nine volt powered, so test it and replace the battery as needed. Make sure it's working, keep yourself safe. Uh, coming into our kitchen area, we do have some accent lighting right here, which is gonna be controlled with the switch right here on the side of the cabinet. Our kitchen faucet is, can rotate here for uh, whichever sink we need to put water in. And we do have hot and cold water. Hot's on the left, cold on the right. This is gonna be your one blind in here that is different due to it being a wet and cooking location. It's gonna be a regular mini blind style with the uh, string there to raise and lower it and then your wand to open and close. You do have travel tabs down at the bottom. So if you wanna travel with the blinds in the down position, just make sure you get them latched in so they don't bang around and get all bent up. <clears throat> overhead is going to be uh, just a storage compartment your 110 outlet is in here for your microwave we do have some goodies in here from the manufacturer as well read through your manuals and things like that that come with equipped with a graystone turntable microwave here put your stuff in set it up let it go uh, vent hood it's gonna have a light on it as well as a fan. Remember the vent on the outside does need to be open if you wanna use the vent hood and allow it to operate the correct way. That's gonna bring us down to our three burner cooktop to get this open. We're gonna lift this first piece of glass back over the rear section and then lift the rear section up and it's just gonna kinda of sit back there on top of the countertop. Now to light your designated burner, just select your knob here. Um, turn it to the... Uh, you know, the high position there, and then just rotate your striker until it lights. Uh, it does have the backlit knobs here with the button on the side there. And then we also have your oven here for lighting. To do that, you're just gonna turn it to the flame. You do have to push in on this one. And it, it will use the sparker. So you would push in on that uh, knob to hold the pilot. Rotate your sparker until it gets lit. Continue to hold that for about five seconds. Once your flame is established, go ahead and let out. Set your temperature, do your bacon, and you'll be good to go. Now, since this is a glass cooktop cover, I do recommend that you let your burners cool before you close it so you don't cause any damage. But to close it, you're just going to grab it and easily fold this down. Then grab the other piece of glass and fold it over. Now, these do have little rubber uh, cushions on the side to may give that a nice snug fit so you do have to push that down in there furnace uh, down here below your oven so all your heat's going to come from there whenever you you are using your furnace underneath your sink we do have a nice large storage area and that's going to bring us to our monitor panel here so we do have four buttons on here uh, for uh, three for the tanks gray, black, and fresh. You can see your corresponding LEDs will light up there. And then we've got battery for battery level as well. And then we've got your water pump switch. So if you're gonna carry fresh water and you want to access that water and pressurize your water system, you're just gonna flip that switch on. It's gonna suck it up out of the fresh water tank and provide pressure at your faucets. 
Um, if you're hooked up to city water, you do not need that turned on. It's gonna bring us to our Dometic refrigerator. So when you open these up, it's pretty natural. You just grab the handle and pull. They're gonna rotate out and open up. Now your controls are tucked away behind the freezer door. It's just two buttons on and off and then auto or LP gas mode. So to turn it on, you're just gonna push the button on there. You can hear it's gonna make a tone. And right now you can see we are in the auto mode. So it's gonna automatically select the most reliable source, whether it be 110 electric or LP gas. Um, if you wanna manually force it to LP gas, just push that button, light's gonna go off. As long as the check light doesn't come on, everything is good to go and it should be lit and operating as designed. Since this is a gas absorption fridge, these can take anywhere from 12 to 24 hours to completely cool. So we do recommend getting them prepped the night before you plan on leaving. And when you get ready to load them up, if you can have things that are gonna go in them already pre-chilled, it will help with the efficiency um, and keep everything kind of working better for you. Now below our refrigerator, we are gonna find our WFCO power distribution panel. Inside we will find all of our 110 breakers and 12 volt fuses. Fuses are on the right. They are just blade style fuses that you can purchase pretty much anywhere. I do recommend keeping a good variety on hand just in case you do end up accidentally blowing one. And that's gonna bring us around to our entertainment area over here. TV is going to mount up on this bracket. This bracket can be pulled up and removed and put onto the bracket on the outside if you so choose, or you can buy it in a total additional bracket to put out there. And we do have all your connections down here. We've got a 110 outlet for power. We've got your um, RCA connections there for audio video from your drive radio. Uh, which is above all of that where you can play your DVDs from and you can connect Bluetooth and stream music. Uh, and then we've got your auxiliary satellite and TV hookup over here with a booster button on it. So that's going to turn the uh, rooftop antenna on and off. If you want to run cable, you're going to turn it off. And if you're going to run satellite, you have to hook up from here to your receiver and then from your receiver directly to your TV. Uh, Dometic furnace thermostats over here on this wall. So to use your furnace, it's just going to be this. We've got two, uh, con two control knobs, if you will. The top button or lever is just going to be your on off. It's pretty stiff on the Dometic thermostat. So it's, don't let it fool you thinking that you can't get it to work. Uh, to the left is going to be on to the right is going to be off. And then the bottom will be our temperature set. So you can, uh, warm it up in here. So underneath our entertainment area, we got a large cabinet. Now, one thing you may want to know is the control board for your slide is down in there. There are some override procedures if, once again, you may be working remotely with somebody on getting your slide in and out over the phone. Knowing where that is is going to be beneficial to you. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about our slide and everything here. So our dinette makes down into an extra bed. So let me show you how that works. Me personally, I like popping all my cushions kind of up out of the way. We're gonna lift our tabletop up and off the posts. Or the posts may come with the tabletop, either way. I'm just gonna work these off of here. And they can store right here underneath the table. And then we're gonna take our tabletop. You can see it's got some Velcro strips on there that are gonna sit right down in here. All right, once we get that into place, then we're just gonna lay our cushions down. The big ones are gonna stay towards the back and the little ones just fill in the middle. So coming back into the bathroom right here on the wall, we're gonna have our light switch for the two overhead lights. Again, these can be controlled separately. We're also gonna find our water heater switch for the gas side. If you're gonna turn it onto the gas side, just flip that to the on, the reset light there is gonna come on for about 10 seconds and it's gonna shut off and the water heater will light up on its own. As long as the light stays off, everything should be working normally. We've got a GFCI outlet in here with a trip reset in it. As long as the green light's on, everything should be working fine. Medicine cabinet. We've got our uh, wardrobe back in here. Storage drawers. Cabinets underneath. And that's going to bring us to our toilet, which is a foot flush down here. Halfway down is going to put just water in the bowl. Uh, once you get it about halfway full, you can go ahead and do what you need to do. When you're done, you're going to push the pedal all the way to the floor. It's going to open up the ball valve in the bottom of the toilet and allow everything down into the black tank. Now you want to make sure you're using plenty of water with your toilet as well as using RV toilet tissue and some type of black tank treatment to control odors and waste digestion. Now your shower in this 
has a uh, sliding shower door here. You just pull it all the way over and it's going to latch in over there. Um, and then to get it to release, you're just going to push in and slide it out. Um, from the inside, it's just a, a pull slot here for your hand, so you can do it from the inside. When you go to open it, you're going to kind of pull the screen towards you just a little bit, but hang on to it because this is spring loaded. Uh, for our shower water, it's just hot and cold mixing valves there. We've got our pause button on the shower head here for flow control. Since we are limited on hot water, you may want to um, limit how much water you're using while you're soaping up. Overhead, we do have your exhaust fan in here. Just cranks open, little push button on it for the fan operation. All right, that should cover everything on the inside of our 21 TBD. All right, guys, that should cover everything on our Gulfstring Envision 21 TBD. But if I have missed anything, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can text us, email us, or give us a phone call. And again, I'm Cody with Princess Craft RV.